Ladies and gentlemen, live from the obvious place to be on Wednesday nights is this special opportunity to witness mending in relationships together tonight. I want to say that Bob the Wonder Wheel and Ken have come to a meaningful agreement. No longer is Bob on strike. No longer is Bob pouting in the corner. No longer is Ken crying in the corner because of Bob. They have come together, and as a special treat, Ken has taken him to Punta Cana, Mexico. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together at Wednesday Night Live's time for Mr. Bob the Wonder Wheel and Ken Kushwa. Well, good evening, everybody. And as you can see, he's right. There's my friend Bob. We've talked through the contract agreement. As you can see, Bob and I are wearing the same hat. We've got a beautiful glass, glasses on. His are, his are a little more colorful than mine. Uh, I've got my friend Krabby over there. It's a beautiful day here on the beach. The sun is shining. The waves are slowly lapping, just lapping at the beach. So it's Wednesday night which means it's time for Stepping Stones. And I told you there's a good chance we're gonna be somewhere every single week that's going to be different. So this week, I decided since they're talking about snow tomorrow and they're talking about snow Saturday and Sunday, and who knows what's coming next week other than 20 some degrees and 30 some degrees, well, I'm, I'm in Mexico, okay? I just, I wasn't gonna stay any longer in Delaware. I got on a plane. Here I am now with me, Krabby, my beautiful sombrero sitting there. As you can see, the palm tree is blocking the sun. It's a beautiful day. I mean, what could be better? I mean, you know, what could be better? What could be better is if you're watching on Facebook or you're watching on YouTube and you have yet to share it already since we're already live, what is wrong with you? Shame on you. You know, the next time, if I can catch somebody that's actually sharing multiple times, we get multiple people sharing. Maybe I'll take you to Mexico with me next time. Who knows? But then again, who knows where we end up next week? Right, Josh? Right. Josh is behind the camera tonight. Leo is not feeling well, so we've got a, a substitute. So far, so good. Nothing has burned down, melted, or sound has not gone dead. It's still early, though. Right, Josh? That's it. There you go. Yeah, All right. So, we do have a special guest tonight, but before we even get near that, we, uh, Bob has, uh, Bob just wants to be spun. So without further ado, I brought Riley Vanna White with me. So I'm going to call Riley Vanna White over from the uh, cabana and let's get him in. Riley! That's right. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. So Riley doesn't care about the heat in Mexico. Nay, nay. He wears his sweatshirt everywhere. You're a tough guy, aren't you, Riley? Yeah. All right. Hey, Riley, who should we make the contestant tonight? Donald. Donald it is. Donald Sasquatch Vitale is in the room tonight. And um, apparently the, um, the animal welfare people have not caught him yet. Right, Riley? No. Not caught him yet. So in honor of Donald not being caught by the animal uh, patrol people, Riley's going to spin Bob and see what... Donald wins tonight. Go ahead, let it rip. You know what he hasn't gotten? He hasn't gotten any beard hair. Come on, beard hair. It's green. Ooh, it's a mystery to those that are watching. Can you read it, son? 
You know what? <laughs> I was comfortable for a moment. Okay. Wow. Is that awesome or what? He is getting a sterilizer compact bag. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Uh, the crowd tonight is, um, it, they're live. They're out in the ocean floating right now. You can't see them, but um, Riley Vanna White, you have done a magnificent job. Could you take my friend Bob and exit off yeah. the beach because it's now my time on the beach. So while Ry, Riley and Bob head off and Donald contemplates the amazingness of his sterilizer compact bag. Because who doesn't want one of those? <coughs> Not that we even know what they are. And Angel's back there coughing to death. Don't worry, she's fine. She's rocking to her music. Y'all can't see her, but she's there. Just a reminder that as we go forward, send your teenagers to me. We start at 6.30, we get fed. Tonight we had chicken and rice. We had ham sliders. We had mixed vegetable medley, right? We had whatever that red stuff was that I did not eat. Stuffed pepper casserole. See, I told you it wasn't jambalaya. Stuffed pepper casserole. And then over underneath the dome of love is the million dollar pound cake, which you all cannot have. But we can, because we're here. So, if you got hungry teenagers sitting at home taking up space on your couch, if the smell of the teenager in your house is overwhelming, send them here. We've dealt with Riley and Donald for all these years. We'll certainly take a new one with us. We have clothespins. We do have clothespins. We have sanitizer spray. It'll be fine, right, Donald? Sure. 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 So, send your kids out. 630 Oasis Church. That's at 2200 Glasgow Avenue in Newark, Delaware. Um, some people would argue it's Bear or Glasgow, but it's Newark because we have a Newark address. So get them out here uh, at 6.30. Anybody's welcome from the age of, we'll say 12, to the age of, well, say 19, because that's teenagers. And then if, if they're older, but they still want to be a part of the chaos and utterness, hey, we got discipleship programs where we can get you working with us, and we'll get you in that spot, and you can help us out and enjoy all the chaos that is a Wednesday night. So if you, if you haven't shared yet, I'm still going to ask you why. Share the video. I like it, love it, hug it. I mean, we got, you have no idea how much technical stuff we got going on now. We got the introduction. We got the beautiful music. We got pictures of me floating into the screen. Josh's mind is blown, and it's not in a good way. We've got me in Mexico, and soon we're going to be putting somebody in the middle of a riot. Who could ask for anything more than that? Donald is asking for more. Oh, no, Donald is upside down. Well, I really wish we have an ability to pan, and trust me, we're going to get there, because we'll start using some remote cameras, and you'll start seeing all the other chaos that goes on, but tonight, we're just going to keep you uh, right here with me. Now, what we're going to do next is, I'm going to pick up my friend there, Krabby, I'm going to get my hat, I'm going to take my chair, and I'm going to head off to the cabana myself, and, and then what we're going to do is, we're going to bring in the one and only, Glenn. Moses. That's right. Moses is here tonight. That's right. Beard, hair, and all. You could win it if you wrote in and said, I want, I want Moses' beard hair. But Moses will be talking to you tonight. I look forward to hearing what uh, Moses has to say. Um, and he will be a part of this program a little bit more as we go forward. As we dip into Moses' mind. I don't know where that's going to go. <laughs> but it could be interesting. You may learn something you never knew about the time when he was around. So Moses is a little old. It's going to take a moment or two for me to switch over. So if you don't mind, give me a second here. We're going to get everything set up, and we'll get right over to Moses. So let's pick up Krabby. Krabby, wave bye-bye. And then we'll put on, we'll get my, my hat and my chair. Chairs out of the way. Was that thunder? It was thunder. That's why I'm getting off the beach. Thanks for mentioning that, Josh. All right. So if you could, Josh, let's just get to the riot. And let's get the glam. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, after much deliberation, 
And uh, being in the car with Kush, I've come up with a little subject. And Pastor Jim has been doing a series of messages that involve a certain subject that's close to my heart. But I'm going to approach it a little different way. Uh, the title of today's message is Drive Problematic People Crazy, the Biblical Way. Uh, while studying the Apostle Paul for my next book, I came across a passage that made me, that is 1 Corinthians 10, 31. It says, whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. <clears throat> so it, it, it made me think of many, 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 many years ago when I was right after the dinosaurs, but you know. Was, I was part of a group that was hired by a Catholic high school to watch over some high school students during their outside during their lunch hour. Um, I'd been working there a couple of weeks, and a girl came up to me and said, could she talk? So I, I said, sure, you know, I'm always there to help people. And she had stated that uh, one of the nuns she felt was really picking on her and giving her a real hard time, giving her low grades and everything else, and just being mean to her. And she said that very clearly that she did not feel that she deserved them. So I asked her if she'd like to know a way that she could get even with a nun and drive her totally crazy, and the nun couldn't do a darn thing about it. So it's, it's kind of a, she, she gets, Got a little interested. Um, it's, it's the kind of subtitle that, that I use is uh, choke him in the name of Jesus in the subtitle. Those of you that are students have teachers or even the principal to drive you crazy. They're always on you, picking on you. Whatever you write or whatever you do in your homework, Nothing's correct. And those of you that have jobs know that there are those bosses or supervisors or even quite um, co co-workers that'll drive you right up the wall as the expression goes. And all you want to do is calmly go over to them and choke them in the name of Jesus. Then you have life in general. Little things like Road rage. Um, not that we'll mention any names, Kush, but you know, things, you're driving along, someone cuts you off real bad, and you just want to run them off the road or choke them in the name of Jesus. Um, <clears throat> so I told, the, the, I told her to treat the nun with total respect in a sincere manner being polite, saying good morning when she first met her, have a nice day when she left. I told her to do the very best work she could, always making sure that her assignments were on time. That would make sure that the nun would not have any reason to pick on her. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I felt this is what, meant, what is meant by the scripture. If we treat people with respect and Christian love, It'll heap coals of fire on their head, as the expression goes in the Bible. In other words, you would accomplish two things. First, you remove any reason they have for picking on you or treating you poorly. And second, they usually will feel guilty for the way they treated you. She came to me a couple of weeks later <clears throat> and thanked me and told me that it really worked that the nun was actually treating her pretty good recently and her grades have gone up a couple bits, a couple points. What the girl did not realize is that she'd actually been switched into a lease, as the expression goes. She had approached the class at school on a secular level, just doing what she had to get by. I showed her the way to do school or any other thing according to what Christ taught, and that is what made the difference. The two points in, the, there's a psychology behind what you might call the bully mode or whatever, is 
the teacher or the bully or whoever is creating the problem, the boss, is going to try and pick on you little tiny things that in and of themselves <clears throat> do not get them in trouble, but will eventually to do, will cause you to do something that will push you to do something or react in a way that now that can get you in trouble and either fail you, expel you, or get you in trouble some other way, or even get you fired. <clears throat> Romans 12, 19 to 21 says, never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so de doing, you'll heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome by evil, but, be o but overcome evil with good. This not only applies in that situation, but I think today it applies in everyday life. Whether it be someone at school, a boss, co-worker, or any other position, or just people you deal with in general. We must remember that as Christians, we represent Christ. Therefore, when we act in a negative way, we are reflecting Christ in a negative manner. Remember, your life may be the only Bible some people read. Thank you, and have a blessed evening. Hey everybody, I'm back on the beach. This time I don't have my chair with me, and I'm a little taller than I was. Yeah, it's awfully bright. Where'd my sunglasses go? Donald, give me my sunglasses. My face is gonna melt. Right there in the corner, son. Try to get somewhere. All right. There I am. That's too much. People are gonna see this. Now they're gonna know I'm not really in Mexico. Yeah, now I'm just going to grab my beach chair because the thunderstorm's over. Just grab my beach chair. I can't chair. help it, you're seven feet tall. That, nobody can help it that I'm seven feet tall. There we go. So we're back on the beach again, folks. Uh, I just want to say thanks to Glenn for uh, coming out tonight and doing that message. Again, Glenn will be a... Um, he will be... There will be things that will be coming from Moses' mind that will be uh, factual kind of things that maybe you don't know. Uh, Bible things, things about Solomon's uh, temple, um, some really cool stuff he knows about how it was built, things like that. So, I mean, he was there when it happened. So since he was there when the bricks were being laid and all, certainly you want to check that out. And it'll be called Moses' Mind. It'll be uh, something that, a little blurb uh, that will come out every week. And he'll be on different mountains. Uh, he'll be in different places throughout Jerusalem. Uh, but it'll be just a brief factual thing. This is from Moses and Bind. Um, do want to just say um, that next week uh, I will be I will be back. I'm not sure where I'm going. Uh, we're getting close to my favorite time of the year, which is going to be St. Patrick's Day, which means we are going to be traveling to Ireland, um, and we may run into Father Patrick O'Reilly O'Flannery. Uh, you never know. He does hang out there every once in a while. But um, join us for St. Patrick's Day. We will be having special food. Right, Lori? Yes. Yes, special food. And uh, we will be not wearing green because if I wear green, well, I'll be gone. Like half of me will be missing. So, I mean, I, I mean, you can't, you can't see my flamingos tonight. Right, Josh? Because if I got too close, I'd disappear, wouldn't I? Oh, no. I don't know. We try it. Yeah. Right. Zoom in. Whoa! No, I didn't do paint away. Look, I got pink. I got my pink flamingos. Okay, back me up. People are scared now. Somewhere there's someone that went. What on earth just happened? The fat guy attacked my television. 
It's a possibility. Anyways, so uh, it is a brief night tonight. Um, it was not meant to be long. We have lots of things going on. We have things that we have been working on. Again, we have stuff that will be coming out. But listen, more than anything else, we'd love to have teenagers come out. We've got air hockey. We've got PlayStation 4. We've got multiple televisions. We've got the ability to stream stuff. We've got the ability to make commercials and have fun. You can come here and shoot crazy videos. I had Kate driving a 50-something Bel Air, and she wasn't even in the car. So come on out. Um, film some stuff with us. Donald's going to be doing a couple of Sasquatch commercials. You don't want to miss that. Uh, we've got some other things that we're planning. But really, it's a good time. Wednesday night, you get fed. I mean, what else could you have? Moms and dads. If you've got teenagers and we can feed them, that's one last thing you have to worry about. That, it, it's not coming out of there. It, it, they don't have to prepare nothing. We got it for them. Right, Josh? We have everything. We have everything. So... We used to have an Amish guy. He's not here tonight, but he'll be back soon, I'm sure. Right? We think. We think. He's out tending his cattle and sheep, though. He's tending his cattle and his sheep, but we'll have to get him on screen one time. I think you're going to love what's coming up. But thanks for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Of course, thank, uh, thank you for Bob the Wonder Wheel, who finally accepted uh, the agreement, and he is no longer on strike. As I said, I brought him down here. He is currently over... Um, at the poolside, enjoying the uh, sunshine and uh, a non-alcoholic pina colada, virgin pina colada, because Bob, you don't want Bob, we'll keep him out of virgin pina colada. It's not pretty. Right? Yeah, it's not pretty. Riley is now somewhere else, probably eating from the buffet at the resort here. But just going to say, signing off from Mexico, uh, thanks again for joining us. Be out here next week. Again, 6.30, we're here live in person. And then at 7 p.m., we go live on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, folks, I watch the YouTube. Not a lot of people are there. So if you've got some people that you know, hey, share it with them. Let them see the uh, craziness that is Stepping Stones on a Wednesday night. Thanks again for joining us. I do hope you have a great rest of your week. We'll see you next week.